Hi folks, I'm Mr. Soul. Many of you may know me. I'm the original breeder of Cinderella 99 and the founder of Brothers Grimm Seeds. I just wanted to say tonight uh, a few words to everyone, and I plan to have these videos a little more frequently, perhaps weekly, so stay tuned. Anyhow, tonight I wanted to talk about why commercial cannabis farmers are growing from seed more so than from clones when they deal with Brothers Grimm, because what we do is we produce all female seed, and this appeals to the commercial grower. And here's why. They can't really tolerate having uh, hermaphrodites and ruining their crops with seeds and so on. Uh, for them, it's even more important than for a smaller grower because they're growing this uh, to make a huge profit. They're a big company, right? So anyhow, um, why do they come to us to solve that problem? Well, I... <clears throat> was educated as a nuclear engineer back in the 80s. I got my degrees, uh, a bachelor's degree in nuclear engineering in 1986. I got my uh, master's degree in 1988. And with that kind of a foundation, you know, as a young man, I went out into the world and when I wanted to do anything, I just went about it with a uh, scientific method, I guess you'd call it. So. When I started breeding cannabis and eventually wanted to try to breed uh, female seeds, I needed to know how that was done right and what was wrong with the way it was being done that was causing the problems that I was seeing. In other words, hermaphrodites were very common among the fem seeds that people were buying and it, it frankly gave the, the name feminized seeds a bad name. Um, they, most people were starting to say now nah, just buy regular seed because Fem seed was too uh, rife with hermaphroditism. Well, I went about it in my scientific method and I did research in uh, cannabis, cannabis uh, research, you know, the journals, the scientific journals and so on. There are Dr. Rahm and other folks like that who've done uh, scientific journal uh, research on the gender shifting in cannabis and hermaphroditism and what causes that. And um, so, what was going on with the guys who were making uh, fem seeds originally when they first discovered it, more or less, was just that uh, a hermaphrodite pollen was getting on another female and making seeds. And when they grew them out, lo and behold, they found that most of them were all female. And that makes sense because you have two females coming together with only X chromosomes and there's no Y chromosome. And a Y chromosome isn't just going to pop into existence from out of nowhere. So there would only be females from those seeds. Um, however, remember, now one of the parents is a hermaphrodite, and that's how you got the pollen. So mm -hmm. you can expect that that's going to be carried on in the next generation, and there's the problem, okay? Well, what I found was that the actual gender shifting wasn't caused by stress, which is what most of the other breeders were doing, was stressing females to see if they could get them to make pollen, and then they would make what they thought were feminized seeds. Now, obviously that just introduces more hermaphrodites because you are by definition using hermaphrodites to breed with. But there's a catch 22 because obviously you think to yourself, well, how am I gonna get pollen from a female if I can't make it into a, you know, quote, hermaphrodite, unquote, right? But what I discovered in the scientific research was that the actual mechanism that was at play there was that the hormones in the organism were making the shift from female to male by blocking the hormone that was responsible for the female flowers. The only thing left that the plant could do was make male flowers, okay? And so if that is caused, that hormonal reaction is caused by a stress, then by definition, that plant is a hermaphrodite. So that's how we define a hermaphrodite. It's a female that makes male flowers under stressful conditions. So now, knowing that, what we do at Brothers Grimm is find plants that will not do that, will not make male flowers under any stressful condition. And then, using those females, we can breed real female seeds that won't have the gene for hermaphroditism because we've already fed, we vetted the parent and made sure that it doesn't have hermaphroditism in its makeup, right? So how do you get such a plant to make pollen? Well, remember now, at the base of this mechanism inside the organism, 
it's the hormones that's really causing the plant to make the male flowers, not the stress. So if you find a plant that won't hermaphrodite under stress, great. Because then what you can do is hormonally induce it to make male flowers. And those male flowers will make pollen that have no, nothing but X chromosomes. And they don't carry the gene for hermaphroditism. And so that's how we're doing it uh, differently and correctly. And now my clients have blown, grown out tens and even hundreds of thousands of our female seeds and they're all consistently high THC, high, excellent terpenes, all of the properties that, you know, as advertised, as well as being all female. And so um, when you think about the advantages that you can have in a growing operation, if you're starting from seeds as opposed to, for example, getting clones, let's just think about the seed will wait for you. So it's going to be on your schedule. They'll only start growing when you decide to germinate them, the seeds, right? And they're all going to start out at pretty much, you know, time equals zero and they're babies and they're all growing up together and they tend to be very uniform. Whereas imagine how difficult it is to take the right number of cuttings to get thousands of cuttings of a certain variety and they're all the same size and at the same root development and that's a nightmare. Right, so starting out with seeds, you're gonna get a much more uniform crop. You're gonna be able to start it on your schedule, not on the clone schedule. You're also saving all of the space that you would be devoting and the resources you'd be devoting to uh, maintaining mother plants to take clones from, and then the clones themselves have to be rooted and grown to a certain state before they can be brought out and brought out to uh, be a flower or start the flowering process. So. That's space that could be used for strictly flowering if you just brought the plants out uh, as seed. So these commercial growers who recognize that those advantages all basically are um, dependent on one thing, and that is that as long as all those seeds definitely produce only female plants, great. We can see where there's no need to use clones. Let's just start from seed and we get a more uniform and timely result. And so they've been coming to us for that reason. And uh, I hope that taking this time to explain that to you will help you understand as you go forward. And uh, please contact us or fill out the form on our bulk seed page. Uh, we'd like to hear from you either uh, through email or a telephone call. And uh, we'll quote you on the quantity of seeds and the varieties that you might be interested in for your particular use. Thanks very much for tuning in. Hope to see you again next week.